Okay, this is a video for uh, section 9.2, which is all about sample proportions. Uh, remember, this is all about sampling distributions. And it turns out that the ch uh, problems in chapter 9 uh, kind of break down into two categories, either about proportions, which is what section 9.2 is about, or means, which is what uh, section 9.3 is about. It's usually pretty easy to tell whether a problem involves proportions or means. It'll talk about the idea of proportions or something out of something or um, some kind of average or mean. Before we get into a proportion problem, though, I want to just make it very clear some of the terminology, the symbols that you're going to see a lot in section 9.2. Uh, P hat is a sample proportion. That would mean you asked 15 people what percent out of that proportion would it be. Whereas P is the population pro population proportion. And just to kind of relate this to what we did before, um, the sample proportion is a statistic because it comes from a sample. The population proportion is a parameter because it comes from a uh, whole, whole population, right? Sample uh, population. We talked about these before in section 9.1, but now we're going to just review them. The mu of p hat, this is the average of all possible p hats, or it's the mean of the sampling distribution of p hat. Sigma of p hat is the standard deviation of all the possible p hats. It's the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of p hat. Um, notice I made a little mistake right here, sorry about that. Um, but these it's going to be, these are going to be really important symbols, and it's confusing because the mean of all possible p hats, okay, that's what that means. I'm going to do something a little bit unusual here. I'm not sure I've done it in a video yet, but I actually want to work through a complete example before I teach you all the stuff. So the way this video is going to work is we're going to do this complete example, and I recognize there'll be a lot of things on this slide you haven't seen before. Um, then we're going to go through and uh, kind of talk about them in detail. And then at the end, I do another example that hopefully might make more sense than this one. But I think just so you can see where things are going. Um, so I'm going to kind of go pretty quickly because you actually haven't learned this yet. Um, so 64% of Americans can swim. So this 64% right here is a P. This is the population proportion. You take a sample of 250 people. So N would be 250 find the probability that p hat, the sample proportion, in other words, out of these 250 people, is greater than 70%. Well, you'll learn this, but there's actually two things you have to check, two kind of rules of thumb. Uh, one is that the population is at least 10 times the sample size. Well, your sample size is 250. Your population is the entire United States, clearly more than 250 times 10. Then recall this back to chapter 8 when we wanted to approximate the binomial distribution as a normal distribution. We, had, we could do that if n times p and n times q were greater than or equal to 10. So I make that check, and sure enough, they are. Um, so now we can approximate the binomial distribution as normal. Now I calculate the mean of all p hats and the standard deviation of all p hats. The mean of all the p hats is p. It's 0.64. Notice this is p. Standard deviation of all the p hats. Here's this new formula. It's actually a formula from chapter 8. Um, so I get the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, which is this. Uh, because I can approximate the binomial distribution as normal, hey, look, the sampling distribution of all p hats is normal. So I just use normal CDF. This is kind of tough to read, but it says 0.7, big number, 0.64, which is this number, and then 0.03, which is this number and I get about 2.4% is my answer. So that's the probability, and this is a lot of P's going on here, so let's kind of make sure. It's the probability that when you take a sample proportion, the uh, value of that sample proportion is greater than 70%. Now we're going to go through and actually talk about these rules of thumbs and these formulas and everything else. So kind of very simply, let's begin with P hat. P hat is a sample proportion. So we think about that as the number of successes over the sample size. Number of successes, we usually use x. Sample size, you've seen over and over again, is n. So just kind of as a silly example, right, if you ask uh, 25 Sacred Heart students if they, you know, uh, take Spanish, okay, p hat would be the number of successes, let's say 16 of them took Spanish, over the number of people you asked, which would be 25. You're going to see that over and over again, because sometimes the problems are phrased in terms of p hat, and sometimes they're phrased in terms of x and n. I want to make sure that you can actually translate between the two. And now here are the two formulas in this section 9.2. It's they're, Bizarrely, they're exactly the same formulas we did back in chapter 8 when we were approximating a binomial distribution as a normal distribution, right? 
the mean of all possible p hats, the mean of the sampling distribution of p hat is p. The standard deviation of the sampling distribution of p hat, the mean of all the possible p hats, is this formula square root of pq over n. Um, it's actually kind of slight, this one's just a little slightly different. We'll talk about it in class. I know in class we use the formula um, square root of n pq, but if you think about that was for the number of successes. Now we're actually dividing this by n, and that actually turns into mathematically pq over n. That's kind of why, why the subtle difference. We'll talk about that in class a little bit. But the difference is because we're talking about percent rather than number of successes. And a quick rule of thumb, it's the same rule of thumb from back in chapter 8. You should only use the standard deviation one when the population is at least 10 times the sample size. Oh, actually, it wasn't back in chapter 8. This is a new idea. Um, this comes a little bit from that idea I talked about in the video for 9.1. If you're scooping uh, popcorn kernels out with a scoop, um, we don't as long as we don't care about how big the population is, as long as it's sufficiently large compared to the uh, to the sample size. Okay, so here are our two formulas that you kind of saw me use in the previous example. Now, kind of an important idea. While technically the sampling distribution of p sampling distribution of p hat is binomial, right? Because there's only so many values it can be. And actually, when you studied binomial distributions back in chapter eight, technically that's what's going on. We learned in chapter 8 that we can approximate a binomial distribution using a normal distribution. And the reason when we can do that is when NP is greater than or equal to 10 and NQ is greater than or equal to 10. So this is kind of our second rule of thumb, if you will. And you saw me use that in the previous example. We like using normal distributions a lot. Um, and future things are going to rely on that. So let's try to do all these problems using the normal approximation. So that's why we check all the time if this is true and this is true and then we forget about the binomial stuff, and we do it using a normal approximation. So now here's a, another kind of complete worked out example. Um, now that some of this stuff should make a little more sense than it did back on the second slide. Um, so now 24% of all Americans smoke, roughly. Uh, that This number is a P, right? This is a uh, parameter. It's the population proportion. You take a sample of 800 people. So this is our N. And then note 800 people, you can calculate, for that 800 people, you can calculate a value for p hat, right, using the idea of uh, number of smokers, x, over n would be p hat. And we want to figure out what's the probability that that particular sample, p, sample proportion, p hat, is less than 20%. Well, we have two rules of thumbs to check. The first rule is, is your population 10 times your sample size? Well, clearly here, right, our sample size is 800 our population against the entire United States, way more than 800 times 10. Can we do this problem as a normal, can we approximate this binomial distribution as a normal uh, distribution? Well, we check, is NP and NQ, are those two things greater than or equal to 10? Clearly, 800 times P, which is 0.24, is greater than 10, and even more clearly, 800 times Q. Remember, Q is the probability of failure, or in this case, not smoking. Uh, is kind of weird to say that not smoking is failure, um, but clearly they're both bigger than 10. So sweet, we can approximate the binomial distribution as a normal distribution, which is why we end up using normal CDF down here. So now we use our two formulas in the section. The mean of p hat is just p, that's 0.24. Standard deviation of p hat is the square root of pq over n. We calculate here's p, here's q, here's n, square root all that, you get about uh, 0 0.015 or about 1.6%. Just as a little kind of caveat here, all these numbers are proportions, right? They're percents. Um, and so it ends up in that you get a lot of decimals. It's a very common mistake to be off by a zero or something like that. Um, so just be aware of that. That um, Just be a little bit careful of not like dropping zeros. So you may get numbers where this is like 0 0.001 or something like that. Not in this example, but... Uh, so now we're looking for the probability that p hat is less than 20%. So we know it's normal because we say we can approximate it as a normal a normal distribution. So I just do exactly what we did before, right? Here's the mean, here's the standard deviation. Now this is the sampling distribution of p hat. This is not the population because the actual population um, that doesn't make sense to even talk about it being normal. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, proportion. But this is the sampling distribution of p hat. We want to know this area. So we go normal CDF, small number, 0, 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 
Then this is the mean of p hat. This is the that's a p horrible p hat. Standard deviation of p hat, and you get about this number. Now, what does this mean? It's really confusing. There's less than a one percent. There's a 0.4 percent chance that when you take a sample proportion, that sample proportion is less than 20 percent. It's hard to even think about what that means. I kind of wrap your mind around that, and we'll do lots of examples. But there's so many percents and p's and proportions going on here that it can get a, a little bit tricky even interpreting what does this number mean. And I just wanted to relate that previous example to one other thing. Um, you actually, there's actually two ways you could do the problem. Over here, I wrote the way we did it on the previous slide. But let's say, for example, the problem was related not in terms of p hats, but in terms of x, where x is the number of people who smoke. Okay. Well, if you look over here, if you want to find x is less than 160, think, just think back to our previous section. You can just do binomial CDF and pk, where n is 800, the probability of success, success in this case meaning smoking, ironically, is 0.24, and the number of failures, I'm sorry, number of successes you're looking for is 159. You get about this, right? Um, this is, notice the problem was phrased not in terms of percent, but in terms of number of successes. It wasn't phrased in terms of p hat here, it was phrased in terms of x here. Well, there'll be lots of problems phrased like this in your book, and you have to kind of first, in this section, in doing it the chapter 9 way, retranslate the problem into a p hat. So remember, I talked about that p hat was x over n. In this case, the number of successes is 160, n is 800. So you're, if x is 160 out of 800, then p hat would be 0.2. Then we do exactly what we did before, and you get about the same answer, right? But I want to just see that if the problem is phrased in terms of number of successes in x, you first want to translate that uh, into p hat, and then you can use the techniques in this chapter 9. And that really wraps up section 9.2.